Hello, Nick. From here. Got a song for you. We are going up, Steve. We are going up. You're listening to Acton Law, broadcasting from the beautiful South Birmingham. Set no substitute. Well, hello, dear listeners. Welcome to Achtung Millwall, being recorded in the immediate aftermath of what proved to be a fantastic away win in the end. Joining me on stream here is all the way from Sweden is our, our regular Swedish correspondent, Doug Hume. Welcome to the show, Doug. Afternoon, Nick. Interesting, <laughs> wasn't it? Last, last 10 minutes made it worth watching. So, yeah. It was, a, I, mean, I, was, I was one of the notes before we scored late in the game, listeners. I, I'd make a note as to what I might say to Doug. So it, it was going to be quite a scratch around to, to make a lot out of, out of nothing much, really. And all I could think of to say was um, it was everything that Barnsley versus Mill in the pouring rain on a cold day in October might, might sum it up in your mind. <laughs> There's nothing unexpected in it, but it was it was a tough away performance there, Doug, wasn't it? It was. I'm not quite sure what to think about it. I mean, we didn't really play that badly. We didn't play that well. Um, um, I mean, the, the only problems we really had caused ourselves. They, they didn't really put us under pressure. I don't, I'm don't. i not quite sure what to make of it. I mean, no, nobody really played badly, but apart from Wallace, I don't think anyone played well either. I mean, Jeb Wallace was off his game. Um, yeah, Ocho had a good 25 minutes and then faded. It wasn't really a day for skillful players, Doug, really, I thought. Um, I mean, Ojo, a phobie and, and Jed, um, I mean, we, we said before the kickoff that that's probably Gary Rowett's choice of starting front three. And I think anyone, you know, anyone that's seen any of those players will say, yeah, that's that's probably the best front line that we're going to get, um, you know, in, in current circumstances. But I, I think agree with that, this... I'm, I'm not sure about Ojo. I mean, uh, sorry, about um, Afobi. He looks a good player, but I'm not sure he fits in the way we play. I mean, he, he doesn't really look that dangerous and he hasn't most of the last, most of this season, really. No, I suppose you could point to the goal he scored at Cardiff, which was from a, in a losing match. So, you know, you might say what, what, not much good that oh, was, no. but that was, that was about, that was probably his, his best point so far. Um, I mean, I, I think, you know, the conditions today, Doug, were not easy. I mean, you know, all, all joking aside, it was uh, a long northern trip in the pouring rain, in the cold, um, and it was everything that you might have expected it to be. Um, I mean, a phobe, I, I, I know what you mean. I mean, he's, he's not looked as effective as um, as we may have hoped when we first signed him. And, and well, I think honest, he looks a good player, but he just, I don't know, he just doesn't seem to click with the way we played the ball up to him more. I mean, we, you don't really see him charging through one-on-one -on -one against the defender and I'm, no, I'm not quite yeah. sure. Um, I mean, he's not a target man, is he? I mean, he's, you know, no. Matt Smith is your, your classic target man. I mean, he's um, not Tom Elliott either, to be fair to I, I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. I, I'm hoping he's going to click, but yeah. he, he hasn't yet, has he? No, I mean, uh, to be positive, um, that's, that's two wins. We're going into an international break now after um, a difficult opening phase of the season. Really, the draws were starting to weigh heavy on our shoulders, Doug, weren't they? And, Yes. To get two wins in succession, I think they made the point on on I follow that um, that turns it into an unbeaten run of um, is it seven games now unbeaten? I, I can't, I haven't got the figures to hand. Um, where is it about right now? Yeah. Yeah, four it, draws it, on the spin, didn't we? So yes, it yeah. about right. Yeah. So it would be, and it would have felt um, much heavier for with maybe two draws, you know, or a loss or something of that kind today. So, um, I mean, my my, my take from the game was to I mean you, you've got to acknowledge the industry of the mill side I mean I, I, no one gave less than 100% I, I do agree it wasn't a game for um, you know the football purist today by any stretch it was, it was um, as it, it was, usually is down at Millwall obviously <laughs> yeah well I mean one of the things that I picked up and obviously the starting 11 we, we were lacking um, Scott Malone today and I think he was a big loss um, strange though, I mean, man of the match nominated by on, on iPhone, and I think I've got to agree with them, was Murray Wallace today, who gave yeah, yeah. gave everything, yeah, Doug. I mean, what what, what yeah. a player to have in your squad as a, as a as a utility man or whatever you want to call he it. He scored early on, but for a good save, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. there was a moment on, yeah. on 19, um, the Murray shot saved. Um, but the the willingness to to commit and and to to get forward, I mean it's not a role that he was really signed in wasn't it I mean he was a kind of a journeyman um, central defender for Scunthorpe and you know I, I've got to admire some of that really develops their game to become this go-to man in, in in tough situations 
He's done a bit of an Andy Frampton, hasn't he? He's sort of turned crowd opinion. Good, good comparison. Yeah. yeah. Good comparison. Yeah. And probably um, that sort of ability as well. well I, he's better than Frampton, but that, it, yeah. you wouldn't say he's a, a star player by any stretch. No, no. I mean, the quality. I mean, I think when, you know, today wasn't a day for Ojo and it wasn't a day for a Fobe because of conditions, but you can see um, some quality touches in both of those players and that, that's that's never going to be Murray. But what he will give you is a very Millwall sense of... 100% tackling and commitment and willingness to 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 be brave and get forwards and put himself where, you know, um, lesser players hide sometimes. He never, ever hides. Uh, no. And I, I really like that in, in Murray. My man that I matched today, certainly based on... Uh, yeah, on by a long way. I, I don't really think you could say anyone else... No, no. Nobody played badly, but nobody played well, I don't think. No. It was nice to see Jake Cooper getting forwards a little bit. It's almost... Um, you know, it yes. wasn't, wasn't as effective as we saw previously when he started doing that, uh, Doug. But, you know, I wonder now, he's got Hutch alongside him. Um, and this <laughs> that may be a flaw in his long-term career. Um, he, you know, he plays better when Hutchinson's alongside him. He won't be able to play with Hutchinson alongside him forever. Um, but he does look a lot better with, with his mate, kind of steady Eddie by the side of him. Yes, I mean, we, he was strangely the one that made the big mistake today, obviously, <laughs> um, yes. Hutchinson. But yeah. he, he does make the defence look so, more solid. I thought we, I mean, especially in the first half, um, not so much in the second, but certainly in the first half, we looked a bit sloppy at times. You know, there was a couple of moments where you think a better side than Barnsley might have might have hurt yeah. us. They're just wayward passes. and they, they were a shadow of their last season self, weren't they, Christ? Yeah, um, I thought they looked really good last season. Um, yeah. uh, they've gone off the boil. I think probably that's the best way to to put it. I mean, really, there weren't many chances for them. I mean, maybe in the first half they had a shot wide from distance. I'm just looking at my notes here, but not an awful lot for Barnsley. We we had the better chances and probably should have done better. There was a moment for a phobie in the first half, Doug, where I think it was Murray that crossed in from the left and a phobie. If yes. he's got a touch to it, it would have been a goal and that would have been a different game entirely than the one we had. But should have done better there. I think it's probably that that you 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 is is niggling at you. That 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 just that's it's just kind of just not quite there at the moment with him, isn't it? No, it, it, it it's not I, th- I think if Bradshaw was playing the way a phobia is, people would be on his back. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I think we should persevere with him, don't get me wrong, but he's just it's not clicking at the moment. No. No, I mean, second half, again, I mean, maybe late there was a, a, a chance, a shot wide from a tight angle for Barnsley, but they showed really nothing in front of goal. So we we kept them really well, at, you know, at bay really well, I thought, in the second period. And yeah, I thought so, yeah. Should have done better. I mean, there was, there was a break forward. I mean, 49 minutes, I've got Jed breaks from midfield ball was cleared when he um, should have scored, perhaps. And there were other moments, ping pong in the, in the Barnsley area. Bradshaw nearly scored as well, didn't he? Towards the end for that. Uh... Yeah, and again, another player. I mean, you know, he's he reminds me of um, some of the, some of the, you know, the, the classic Millwall player is never the most gifted, but will give you everything. And, and Tom Bradshaw, he's been around for a few years now. He's a Harris signing, and you know, we don't know what will become of him when his contract comes up. Um, I doubt that he would stay, but he gives you everything. I mean, it was his work that actually produced the. Um, the, uh, the corner, the free kick, and yeah, then exactly. the corner, isn't it? For the for the yes. goal late on, perseverance and in, and persistence, and these these are qualities that we we, we admire down the den. Um, so yeah, I mean, late late um, corner. Um, there's nothing sweeter in football, Doug, than nicking a game late. At the- <laughs> <laughs> <After long. laughs> I mean, I really take my hat off to the travelling 500 went up there today. But what a great journey home that's going to be, having nicked oh, a goal late. <laughs> 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 when it really looked like we weren't going to I mean it had nil nil yeah. for from probably 60 minutes I think yeah I mean it was it was a tough watch I mean I'm, you know we're obviously giddy on the um the, the afterglow listeners from from Murray Wallace's fantastic header down from a corner um it was bundled in really when it? it was it was, but you know we were still probably a little bit um you know, I'm overexcited from that, Doug, but it was a tough game to watch today. Um, I'd actually been thinking with the corners that we we seem to put the corners right under the crossbar now in the centre of the goal, whereas earlier yeah. in the last season, we were putting them at the back post and we, we looked a lot more dangerous when they went back. And strangely enough, that was one that did go to the back post. Well, it's funny. Well, the back post. 
I was there in the week, a midweek, and we, you know, we we've slightly developed our corner tactics. So there was, at the start of the season, we were really packing the six yard box. Like we almost had um, not quite everyone, but a lot of players in that six yard box, and that seems to be. You know, something I saw in, a, in another game, a Premier League game, and I wonder whether that's like the modern style, what you do from corners. Um, in the week, we were we had a gathering around the penalty spot and put some in the six-yard box. But today, it was just much more conventional stuff. And I agree, you know, if we can get it to the, the back post, you've got some big men there, Murray, Wallace, Jake, and then Matt Smith, obviously, who came into today's game. So um, we do look a bit more effective when we keep it simple, don't we? Yes, definitely, yes. I mean, what, I mean, what do you make of negative Gary? I mean, there's this thing on the on, on the net now, negative Gary. I, I must admit, I sighed when Ojo left the field for Brad. Well, it was, <laughs> you know, he'll have the last laugh on me because it was actually Bradshaw's industry that produced the the situation that where we scored. So, um, I, I thought the last couple of games, I think that when he said that judge us now when we if we're going to win games or not. Yeah, I think there's been you you'd see sort of two or three players in the box before and the last couple of games sort of both fullbacks are up there and one of the midfield players is up there and there seems to have been a change in his mindset I think I, I actually think we were set up not to lose going up to maybe three or four games ago and I now think he's thinks that we can actually sort of go for it more now, if you think back to the first half against QPR yeah we're not we're not playing like that by any stretch and we haven't been and that maybe is what we should be doing I suppose the injury um, crisis has, I mean, yes. I, I, I yeah. thought, um, we don't know where Evans is today. I thought Evans actually played quite well. And he's not a player that I take to and haven't, you know, um, haven't really loved so far since I've seen him. But so he was doing okay in the first half. I, I think, think Savile seems to play better with him alongside him. Yeah, I think he looks more comfortable. I mean, Savile didn't do too bad today. I think he's slowly getting his mojo back from the player that we used to, you know, obviously you look back to in um, in that promotion in this season. I think with Sabo, though, he, he is actually getting into the box, but we're just not finding him. I, I don't think he's really changed that much. I, I just think, I mean, previously when we had sort of Morrison knocking it down and Gregory and what have you, yeah. I, I think there was, the ball was coming to him, whereas now it's not. No, there's work to be done. I mean, that's that's for sure. I mean, the season is a developing thing, obviously, but... Um, we've got the international break now, um, and it would be nice to see those kinds of issues. I mean, I think also we have to cut out the sloppy stuff, Doug, because I mean, we, yeah. again, a better side than Barnsley, and they were poor. I think you can't you can't put it any other way. Um, a better side than them would have punished us today in the first half, yes. especially. No, definitely, they they look like they're on. Well, unless they, I don't know, I don't know maybe it's the Millwall manager thing again. We might we might get another one gone, but uh, <laughs> if they if they keep that side and that manager, I think they're in trouble this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're just looking at the league table as, as we're speaking. I mean, they've dropped into the bottom three, justifiably, looking at um, that performance today. Um, Mill at the giddy heights now, Doug, of 11th in the table. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, on 15, just three points off the magic six spots. <laughs> we're nearly, uh, sure of a quarter of the way into the season, I suppose you'd say. Gary Rowett would say all this critique of him you know and his negative tactics that's the answer isn't it you know we're, we're looking now in the right direction yes I mean the trouble is we have to sit and watch the 90 minutes and sort of watching <laughs> the crap he's been throwing out recently it's um, yeah it's been it's been tough well well done for enduring it today <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was it was a tough watch um, now, to be it, it was better than some of the other stuff he was throwing out earlier in the season it, yeah it wasn't, I mean, uh, I, th- yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I, th- I think to contrast it, just to close us, um, I mean, a contrast I would make, I don't know if you agree, is that today was a tough watch, but in a classic kind of nor- long northern trip in the pouring rain in Barnsley, you know you're not going to get a classic and it was it was a hard grind. And I think, you know, with one or two bits and pieces, you can criticise a couple of errors here and there and misplaced passes and so on. But it was a committed mill performance in very, very tough conditions. And I'd agree you know, with that. And you, you can't really blame the manager for the no. single person errors either. So yeah. So and, and to, to nick it with a with a late, late winner, an 88th minute, uh, Murray Wallace header is is sweet, sweet wine. So um I think we can probably now all enjoy our uh, our international break and hope you enjoy yours in Sweden, Doug. I'll certainly try. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's starting to get dark and cold here so I've just put two weeks in Mexico so uh, that'll be right. 
enjoy yourself, mate. Really appreciate you doing this call today in the immediate aftermath of Barnsley nil, Millwall one. We're going to be right back after these messages. Big thank you to Doug. Thank you very much, Doug. Thanks, Nick. Cheers. Achtung, Mailball. Hello, Nick. Uh, Tony Mandy here. Um, just bringing in on the back of that result. Um, I'm buzzing my tits off, if I'm honest. Uh, again, for the third time of the week, I thought we've gone out and attacked uh, attack teams. Um, we could have won all three of these games, to be honest. Uh, today, anyone saying it's negative, I just don't get it. Because literally, we've spent the entire game, well, probably three quarters of the game in their half. Um, it's not often we have more possession than the, op- like the opposition. We've literally fucking battered them today. And all I, the only thing I can say is that the forwards just need to click. And they just seem a bit shot shy at the moment. We were getting in positions, but they, they're not seeming to click together at the minute. Uh, Ojo is looking a player, but he just doesn't seem to know where he's, who he's connecting with or, or such. And uh, I can say, uh, Murray Morris could have had that trick today. I mean, he's missed a sitter in the first half after 10 minutes. And another shot, and then... I mean, what a fucking header he scored at the end. He's come straight over the top of, I think it was Cooper, but it might have been Smith to, to demand that header. And that was on the back of a, a, an unbelievable performance from him. He's doing tricks as well. He's doing like um, little flicks and body swerves. He's passing, even at range, he's, he's superb. He is a proper player. It's, it's not the athlete that you'd expect from someone who... And he's a centre-half, let's remember that. But uh, all in all, what a great result. And say the two wins this week make the draws look decent now. Uh, everyone, I mean, I've criticised Rowett at times this season when I thought he's been reactive rather than proactive. But I can't accuse him that of the last few games because we've actually gone out to win the games. People say we're playing five at the back, but we're not. We're playing three at the back. Our wing-backs are, playing, are spending more time halfway up the pitch and in the opposition's half than they are in their own half. And, and that's, that's a fact. You just watch the games. Uh, I say, when we click, I think we're going to be a bit of a force, but it's just a back to the forwards of clicking. Uh, for, uh, there was a good cross in today and the phobie didn't extend his leg. When you see it from behind the goal, he didn't extend it. Jed worked his nuts off. Nothing seemed to quite come off for him. Apart from, as say, he got the assist from the corner. Uh, all in all, I thought it was a, a really good performance without actually, say, clicking in the final third. When that happens, I, I just think we're going to actually fucking destroy a few teams. Maybe I'm just being... Over, I'm drunk on optimism, maybe. But uh, onwards and upwards. I can't wait for the next game now. Cheers, Nick. Hello, Nick. Glenn here. Uh, yeah, Said in my first game of the season today at Barnsley, so uh, that was nice to get back in the ground with a, a group of people again. Um, conditions were, as they always are up in Barnsley, were, were, were pretty poor um, all round. And um, despite having a nice pitch, I think the, uh, the, the the rain made it actually a really difficult game for the players. So I, I think everybody struggled with that. But I think generally the team tried to attack the whole game, which was good. Um, there were lots of opportunities to, to cross or hit a, hit a good pass that were, that were being created. Unfortunately. The, uh, quality on the final ball didn't really uh, didn't really match that. Um, so um, people like Afobi, who, who really put in a great shift, didn't really ever get the, uh, the quality of service they needed to really impact the game. Uh, Hutchinson was immense, but I, I think you know we have to admit that there were like I think it was like three um, gifted um, errors that were that were given to the opposition who had the one on one with Bart, and each time Bart pulled off a save. Um, we could have been behind quite easily on those. So um, defence at the moment. You know, capable of brilliant performances, but also capable of, of, of real sort of um, clangers at any moment. Um, Barnsley, I think they were oh, in pretty poor form. That's a, that's a poor team. They're probably going to go down. Um, but I think special mentions for Savile and Evans, who I, I think really played well today. And I, and I think Evans has you know, regaining form that he showed us. And he, he's got a great eye for a pass and he can spot a good opportunity to, to set up an attack. And uh, I think we showed that today, although he did play towards the end. But I think, generally speaking, you've got to say the midfield did well today. And really, we we deserved, yeah, we deserved at least a, a draw. And a win is is not against the run of play. Um, so, yep, not a bad performance. Certainly, plenty to work on. Come on, you lines. Achtung, Mailball. 
across the way league, league win off the season with a clean sheet. Two and two now heading into the international break. It's a nice way to head into that little rest period. Yeah, look, we've, we've headed into both international breaks um, quite well um, with good results. I think that we've certainly... We've been um, a lot better in recent, you know, the recent month. We've had a good month um, to finish it off with two wins. We've had so many draws again. Some of those moments, you know, if that's another draw today, I think it's unfortunate for us. But you know, we just need a little bit more and, and to, to to get the win at the end. I felt it was what we deserved. I thought we navigated the game really well. I didn't think really Barnsley causes that many problems um, in open play. They're a danger from set pieces, but but um, you know, certainly I thought we were well worthy of a win today. And now it gives you a good chance to, to get some of the, the injured players back and allow them to recover for, for the after the international break. Yeah, and I think it gives some of the players a chance to recover that have come straight back in and had to play back-to-back games like Hutchie, um, you know, Danny McNamara. You, know, you can see just a little bit of fatigue. I think Muzza looked out on his feet, even though you didn't really show it. The lads are joking in there, saying he's doing the London Marathon tomorrow uh, just for a rest day. So, so um, But we've got, we've got players that I think it'll do them a little bit of good to have a breather. We'll try and get the balance right. Um, you know, in terms of who gets that breather and who doesn't get that breather. Uh, but we'll certainly have players back, I expect. Mason could have been available today. Chose not to um, pick him. He's only had one day's training. I think Scotty will be fine. Um, and I think we we'll more or less have everybody back, which will be fabulous. Hard for me, uh, but fantastic. You can see the difference when we've got those options. We look like a team that, that can win games of football. Welcome back after the break, dear listeners. That was, of course, Gary Rowett, manager of Millwall FC making the very um, crucial point, I think, that after the international break that is now upon us, we should start to see the uh, the impact of a fully fit squad, a fully fit uh, Millwall side. We haven't really had a chance to see that for God knows how long. Um, Today's performance up there at Barnsley was, I thought, was very hard worked. I mean, I've already spoken to Doug, as you would have heard already, um, you can always criticise some errors. I think um, Rowett there says about some of the players playing rather on, on empty empty tanks at the moment. And I think that did show, especially in that first half. But overall, it was a magnificent performance today. And um, one that all Mill fans should be proud of. Um, Man Mountain, uh, Murray Wallace earning the plaudits online. Just to have a quick run through some of the post-match comment from the Twitter Jake Saunders makes the, the very valid point um, how Murray Wallace has not been called up by his nation, Scotland. Um, we contrast him with Kieran Tierney and Andy Robertson. But uh, as, as Jake says here, considering he can play at centre-back, it's criminal that Murray Wallace has never been called up by, by Scotland. Um, two goals and four assists in his last six games, says Terry. Anyone who thinks we won't miss Jed Wallace if he leaves, needs to have their head tested. So if you think that, listeners, get yourself along to your GP and ask him for a head testing session because you think that we can do without Jed. Um, Kevin Fuller, last week's guest, says it was a workmanlike performance. I I would agree with that, Kevin. Uh, We ground out a great result in pretty awful conditions. We've not lost now in seven league games. It's strange how that um, draw sequence, which once was... Um, you know, a Steinway piano on our back has now turned around to become an unbeaten in seven, um, you know, stat. Um, going into the international break, says says Kevin um, Dolbs, Mill Dolbs, says Murray, Murray Wallace deserved that massively. Gary Rowett owes him a few beers after another boar fest. Um, certainly the first half was, um, was, was tough. Um, a tough TV experience, Dobbs. I will, I will give you that much, mate. Um, I'll take a shit housing a win, uh, says says Dobbs. Uh, Merv Payne says the Mill Hall of Fame may be reserved for the greats like Cripps and Kitchener, but there is definitely an honourable space in the lobby for Murray Wallace. And finally, um, I like this one. Uh, this is from Mill Half Wayline. Barnsley manager Marcus Shop. Marcus Shop may well be about to discover one of Mill, one of football's laws of nature, the curse of Mill. I thought they were very poor today, and um, maybe the Mill curse will strike and give Shop the chop. Uh, that's that's copyrighted to Merv. Actually, I've nicked that joke from you there, Merv. So a big thank you to Doug for coming on straight after the game today. It's never easy to do those, dear listeners. You 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 kind of um. 
you have minimal chance to to collect your thoughts um, and you're shooting from the hip really so a big thank you to Doug for doing that and also for everybody who's rung into our voicemail 0208 144 do leave us a message or two I always try to include them in future shows and it's just really great to get some feedback anyway thank you for listening now we're into the international break two weeks off um, no show uh, this week I might try and get a couple of um, nostalgia editions out but otherwise we'll be back after the end of the international break for the next uh, fixture which I believe is at home on the 16th of October versus Luton Town I'll be there for that one so until then dear listeners um, we've had our weight taken off of our shoulders enjoy your international break everyone and I'll see you again in two weeks time until then Arrivederci Mill and bye for now Thank you for listening to Aston Millwall. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a cheeky little review. A river direction you all. Till next time. Who do you want to watch?